Hi everyone, welcome back to another video about my solar PV system. For those that haven't seen my videos before, there should be a playlist with lots of videos taking you through from the very thought about me going solar all the way through to a month by month update showing what it's like, not just in the numbers, but what it feels like. And that's what's important to me. It was important to consider going solar, consider putting solar on the roof and then how would it change um, how I consumed energy and what I thought about it. And yes, over the last few months, I think it's pretty fair to say that I've been not quite addicted to it, but uh, yeah, it's a great hobby actually, having solar panels, watching your energy, keeping your energy consumption low, trying to be as green as you can. It is quite interesting. Now, yes, I'm a bit of a geeky nerd, I guess. I love data. I'm an XIT manager with a technical background. Um, I do like the data, so it appeals to me. But equally, if you've got solar panels on your roof, you can just switch off and you can just let them do their thing. You just have it configured how you want to. So anyway, let's get back to the update today. It's the 1st of February. It's a bright, sunny day here in Norfolk. Absolutely fantastic. I haven't actually looked yet, but I'm so used to what's happening on the panels and so used to looking at the numbers, I can pretty much look, see the sun's above the tree line. That's probably three kilowatts. We've probably got three kilowatts coming through. In the next hour, if the sun stays like that, it'll probably be four, maybe four and a half kilowatts. It's, when you watch the data that much, you do actually get to know what's going on just looking at the weather. You can guess how many watts or kilowatts you've got coming through. Anyway. This month has felt like exactly what it has been, and that's a turnaround. You've got November where light is failing and the days are shrinking, and then you get December where you reach the shortest day here in the UK. That's basically led to the gloom and the doom of November and December, and that probably came across in my updates. Now January is getting brighter, the sunlight is arriving sooner, I'm now charging again um, by, charging the electric car that is, by nine o'clock in the morning with one kilowatt. So the sun is rising higher, it's brighter, uh, the angles are better for the solar panels and the day is longer so we're gaining more kilowatt hours in a day. So basically I can feel that transition from November and December which really weren't nice, it was a horrible weather here in the UK, dark, gloomy, lots of rain. And I generated, uh, let's say, 200 kilowatt hours in November and December. And lo and behold, we've actually generated the same pretty much in January. There's not a lot of difference between the three months, but January has felt very different. It's felt more positive. Now, maybe I suffer from that sad syndrome of seasonal disorder with lack of sunlight and with the now longer days, it's starting to feel brighter, brighter in myself, let alone actually in the skies. Equally, I can say if you look back at last year, then February was an incredible month. With just our initial solar array of 3.9 kilowatts, we had uh, 260 odd kilowatt hours generated. That's nearly twice what we generated in either November, December or January. So February last year was an incredible month. Um, it was actually really sunny and warm, I, I remember it well. But it makes me think, you know, are we now at that transition point? The 1st of February today, is February going to be even brighter, even better? Is it really the start where I can start having the hot water heated completely by solar power and also charge my car completely from solar power? And this is the 1st February that I've had both solar arrays. Last February, I only had 3.9 kilowatt array. Now we've got a total of 6.3. So it should be completely different. I'm looking forward to feeling the difference and noting the difference in numbers and the usability and how much I can use the solar power that we're generating. So anyway, enough of the talk. Uh, it is a bright month. Uh, I've really enjoyed it. From comparison to other people online, I think I've done well here in Norfolk. Norfolk is quite south and east, um, and my solar panels point pretty much south. So you now we're in a good position. Um, we do get a lot of sunshine first thing in the morning. And uh, yeah, being close to the coast, we're only 10, 12 miles away from the coast here. It's, it's quite good. It seems to be um, that the weather either goes across the sea, across the channel, or more inland. And we do seem to get quite a few breaks in the cloud here. Anyway, very happy with my solar configuration. As you can tell, smiling. Yeah, I'm quite miserable on some of my videos, but it is bright and sunny and it really does make me feel happy. And let's get straight into the data then. 
This is the chart that I use to record my generation from the two arrays. The darker blue is the 3.9 kilowatt array, the lighter blue on top, that's the 2.4 kilowatt array that I added in September. And if you look, November, December and January, they're all just over 200 kilowatt hours. Not much in it, but compare that to January from last year when we only had the one array, 145, 146 kilowatt hours. So having that second array is making a big difference to me. Zooming into that data and looking at a day by day basis, we can see here that we had roughly 12 days where there was hardly any solar. So it felt like there was no benefit of having the solar panels. But then there were 10 days where we had enough energy to not only heat the hot water, but also charge the electric car a little bit as well. So not too bad a month. Peak generation was on the 18th of January, that was just over 19 kilowatt hours. And if you compare that to last summer, last summer with just the 3.9 kilowatt array, we generated 28 kilowatt hours. You can see we're not generating as much in January. Although the My Energy app isn't the most accurate, this is a good indication that uh, looking at consumed generation and exported generation, then I'm actually consuming around 92, 93% of what I'm generating. That's pretty good. According to my energy, I imported 174 kilowatt hours from the grid, but according to the smart meter I have, that shows 151 kilowatt hours for the month. But the solar edge inverter says 161 kilowatt hours, and finally my meters actually said 156. So you can see they're all within, what, 5 kilowatt hours. The entire month, I've only exported 20.6 kilowatt hours according to this. And if you look at the bottom graph, there are lots of days there where I didn't export anything or hardly anything at all. So if I had a storage battery, I wouldn't be able to gain that much, not in these winter months. So where did we use all of that energy? Well, 75 kilowatt hours went through our solar diverter, our eddy device, to heat our hot water. Another 77 kilowatt hours went into charging our Kona Electric through our Zappi device. That left 44.5 kilowatt hours that we drew from the grid to charge our electric car. That's about six pounds in cost of electricity from the grid. And we traveled 902 miles for the month. That's less than one pence a mile. Plugging those numbers into my main chart, we can see in orange generation is up slightly. In the blue bars, our grid import is uh, down to the same sort of level as November. Car charging in green is down, but that's because we left the car at the end of the month on a low state of charge. So if we started at a higher state of charge, then we've got some kilowatt hours stored away in there. And hot water, yeah, we didn't put quite as much into that this month as last month either. So number wise, nothing to get excited about, I guess. But still, and yet, January still felt much brighter and much better. So it is all in the mind, isn't it? It's not necessarily just in the technical numbers. For those that are interested, this is the data from my Solace inverter from the 3.9 kilowatt array. We generated 146.1 kilowatt hours for the month just from that array. It's slightly more basic data as well from this Solace inverter. The solar edge monitoring from our second array, that's much more detailed and I think a much better um, imagery about the data. The extra information about consumption and grid energy, that comes because I've installed a watt node meter as well, connecting to the main power supply of the house. So that's why it's a little bit more detailed. The Solace inverter doesn't have access to what I'm importing and what I'm exporting. So I actually prefer the solar edge monitoring solution here. Although on this graph, because it's showing what I'm importing, and that's quite a large amount on one of the days, then the scale of what I'm actually generating looks tiny here in green. Green is the uh, generated electricity from these solar panels. One thing I am considering doing, I'm considering installing a second watt node meter, and basically I can put that on a clamp, on a CT clamp, on the solar array of the SOLUS system. And then the data from the SOLUS array, I can move that across into the Solar Edge monitoring platform too. So I'll actually see all of the solar generation from my two arrays in one place. That I think might be useful. I'm not sure if it really is worth me spending 200 pounds to get that, but it would make the data look nice and uh, the graphs would look better. I'd only have to look in one place. It would be a more complete solution. So yes, I am tempted to do that, but I want to check first this store edge battery solution. If I install a second watt node meter, can I then still install a store edge battery solution on top of that? Because that might be the route that I go in the future. 
One day this will be a good and interesting graph. It's a graph here showing the monthly amounts of generation for my solar edge array. But obviously I've got some gaps in the middle and that's when I didn't have the solar edge inverter installed last year. Between January and September I didn't have that array. So the data's empty. And the array that I did have, the Solus array, well there's no data in there because at the time I was not importing data from the Solus inverter into the solar edge uh, monitoring platform. Now that we've got to January 2020, it's showing in green, but I've got to wait until September until I get a month by month comparison. So I think this is a good graph to show the issues with data and the uh, visibility of your generation when you have two separate arrays and you're using two different platforms to monitor them. Maybe I'd be better off having it all in one place. As always, thank you all for watching. Thank you for subscribing. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. It's really nice to know how many people are following these videos and makes it worthwhile of actually producing them. See you again soon, everyone. Bye-bye for now.